Now for our uh, little segment we call Ask the Experts. Oftentimes I, I pretend to be the expert on this show about everything, but uh, we actually have some people here who know what they're talking about. We have Dr. Stephanie Salzberg and Dr. Melissa Shaw. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Very good. How are you? Good, good. We're uh, going to talk about vascular disease. Now, first of all, uh, what are the risk factors for vascular disease? Well, when we're talking especially about arterial disease, but also venous, some of the most important risk factors are blood pressure, uh, cholesterol, heart disease, and one of the most important ones would be smoking history. All right, so all the usual suspects then, huh? Yeah. And um, is there any family history that plays in on this at all? Yeah, there is. There is. Um, Lifestyle is certainly a part of it, but there is some family history component to it as well. I guess what, what... I think people have an idea, but what exactly is vascular disease? Um, It's very comprehensive. It includes any disease of the arteries and the veins. The arteries are the blood vessels that carry the blood to the extremities and the organs to bring the nutrients and oxygen, and the veins are the vessels that bring it back to the lungs. Okay. So it's pretty much any disease within the blood vessels. Okay. Uh, Oh, we're getting a call. Let me just grab a call here. Yes, hello, Mix. I do. I have a question for the doctor. Uh, My name is Stephanie. I'm 27 years old. I've never had kids. Um, And I have very close veins in my right leg, and they're pretty big. Mm -hmm. Um, I just wanted to ask the doctor, is there something I should, is this something I should get removed? Okay. All right. Thanks for calling in. We'll, We'll talk about it. All right. Thank you. Okay, so yeah, so she uh, wants to know about the varicose veins, and uh, she's a young woman. Now, is this common? Varicose veins are very common, and they're often underdiagnosed. Um, It's thought to be a disease of women, but that's actually not correct. There's actually a fair amount of varicose veins that are found in men as well. Mm -hmm. Um, It is not significantly dangerous, but it can cause problems, and it can be very symptomatic. So we generally will intervene on varicose veins if the person is having symptoms or if they're having complications from the veins. Now, if you have veins and, you know, you just don't like the way that they look, we can obviously do cosmetic procedures for that, but it's not medically necessary. So if the veins are causing symptoms like pain, aching, heaviness, fatigue, throbbing, then that's when we would want to fix them. Now, don't they, doesn't that normally come along with something like varicose veins where people are experiencing some problems along with them? Not necessarily. There are some times that they are just cosmetic, um, but in a fair amount of patients, they will have associated symptoms. All right. So if people can, like if you have them and people don't mind that they have them, they shouldn't automatically panic and go, wow, there's something wrong with me. Especially in this case, we have a very young woman who hasn't even had kids yet. Correct. Then she does not need to panic. And generally, if possible, we prefer to actually fix them after she's had children because the pressure of having the baby on the uterus will actually cause more varicosities. Yeah, they will get they will get worse. Uh, we're on with Dr. Stephanie Salzberg and Do- Dr. Melissa Shaw uh, talking about vascular disease. And uh, what are some of the other things that, that people should know about this that, that you guys treat on basically a daily basis, I'm sure? Well, we treat a broad spectrum of vascular disease, obviously, everything from uh, carotid disease and stroke to aortic aneurysms um, to varicose veins. And then one of the most common things that we do see is something called peripheral arterial disease, or PAD, and that's something that some of the listeners may have questions about. Um, peripheral arterial disease... Uh, spectrum ranges from something called claudication, which is cramping in the walking muscles, particularly the calf, all the way to something called rest pain, which is constant pain in the foot because of not enough blood supply. And this can also progress to ulcers or basically tissue loss Mm -hmm. and gangrene, which is the blackened tissue that can occur in the the foot um, with a long time of not having enough blood supply. Now, would this happen with somebody who's probably severely overweight, I would think, maybe diabetic? I don't know. I'm Diabetes just Diabetes is certainly yeah. a big risk factor. Yeah. Obesity in and of itself may not be an independent risk factor for peripheral arterial disease, but certainly diabetes is. Okay. Anything else to add on that? Um, and it's very significant in smokers. Uh-huh. Um, but these are the types of blockages in the arteries that you hear about on TV and the commercials that you can often balloon or stent open with minimally invasive procedures. And Mm -hmm. I think that's a um, very important point, which is that in the past, a lot of vascular disease had to be addressed with big operations, and now they can be addressed with a lot of minimally invasive advanced technologies. So it's important that if you're having symptoms to see it 
see a doctor, have it evaluated because there are minimally invasive treatments. Now, what what about people that uh, I, I, there's a lot of herbal remedies out there? You know, you see that, you hear about it all the time. Is, is that something that's effective for people to be taking? Is it bad uh, you know, versus regular medication? Homeopathic medicines are typically ineffective for mm-hmm. treatment for most of the per- arterial disease and venous disease that we see. Um, for the most part, it may not be um, detrimental, uh, but if it delays care and diagnosis, it certainly could be. Okay. All right. All right. So if uh, folks are uh, wondering, you know, if they have some problems, or, or how do they get in touch with, with you guys? Well, we're part of the vascular group. Mm-hmm. Um, we're a large group of vascular surgeons, and we cover a large part of New York State. Uh, Dr. Salzberg and I um, are mostly in Poughkeepsie, uh, and our office phone number here in Poughkeepsie is area code 845-483-0698. We also have a website for our group, um, which is um, albanyvascular.com. All right, and also they can uh, check you out on the HealthQuest website, which is uh, health-quest.org. And uh, get in touch with them, uh, even if it's not you. Maybe you have a family member who's going through some issues, and certainly better get it checked out early than, than wait, right? Because it can only get worse. That's right. Yes. All right, uh, Dr. Stephanie Salzberg and Dr. Melissa Shaw, thanks for coming by and being part of our Ask the Expert uh, segment. Thank, thank you. you very much. All right, great. All right, Mix 97.7, it is uh, 741, sunshine today. We'll get up to around 67, and uh, here in Poughkeepsie, 38 degrees at Mix. Halloween is coming, and 